Guys, welcome to The Pulse. We are excited to get things started again today, as we always do, with people who are making a difference, have careers, success, inspiring people, and Mr. Glenn Turman. I, I was talking about Emmy Award, NAACP Award. I don't have enough time to list all the shows and movies and Broadway, all those things you've been in. Thank you for taking time with us. Thank you for having me. It's a long list. I mean, we're going to be real. Like, I'm looking through. It's a long list of things that you've been doing throughout your career. Well, you know, I've been at it a long time. And uh, I, I don't know if that's because I don't have enough sense to, to get out of it <laughs> and leave it. But, uh, but I've been doing it, of course, since I was a youngster, and I just still enjoy it. So, And people still seem to... Uh, um, find some value in watching me. So here I am. It's interesting you mentioned, obviously, youngster. Um, and that, that was an, an interesting story because you got into it as a child, but got into it, you know, with some of the greats and the legends and, and making history very earlier in your career. Tell us that story. We uh, started with Sidney Poitier and Ruby D, Lou Gossett Jr., uh, Lloyd Richards, the great director, you know, and of course at the helm of all of that was the wonderful, uh, legendary Lorraine Hansberry writing a play called The Raisin in the Sun, which was the first Broadway drama written and produced and directed and starring and everything by uh, people of color, you know, uh, in the, back in the 50s. So that's what I was a part of that entourage. And did you have any concept as a child in that room? what was going on as a 12 year old i didn't care what was going on i, I all i wanted to do was go play baseball you know <laughs> I wanted to take my lines get off the stage go go hang out with the guys on saturday afternoon and play baseball and they're talking about a matinee i gotta work you know what are you talking about <laughs> but so it was really kind of that uh, audacious na naivete that uh surrounded me and um but uh, later in years, I, it, it became my life, you know. What was it, your, your mother who said, you should go audition for this? You, you were not a huge fan of school, so let me go right. ahead and act. My mother and Lorraine Hansberry were very close uh, in the village, uh, uh, Greenwich Village back in the day. And uh, so they were, they were, we were all neighbors, and, and she, along with James Baldwin and several others, were part of my mother's uh, collection of friends. And uh, so that's the atmosphere I grew up in. I, I say this a lot on this show. It's always amazing to me how nonchalant and casual people who have participated in history just kind of throw it out there. Yeah, you know, James Baldwin, Lorraine Hansberry. We, 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 <laughs> me and moms and them, <laughs> we're just hanging out. You're right. When I think about it, you know, uh, and try and distance myself from, from it, I really, you know, it is a realization that these were some of the greatest people of our time, you know, uh, and but uh, but while in it and growing, being a part of it, it's just that, you know, the only thing I wanted to know from Mr. Baldwin was, could he give me a quarter so I could go down here and get this ice cream cone, you know? So humble beginnings to the career <laughs> that ended up going on for, still going on, you know, 50 plus years. So raising the sun as a child. Uh, and you just knew you, you know, I'm acting, I'm having some fun. When did it become serious? Yes, it, it, it became serious for me when uh, I got to the high school of performing arts. And I talk about all of this in my, in my documentary, uh, The Legend of Glenn Turman. It became serious for me in my junior year in high school, the high school of performing arts. I think it's now called LaGuardia. Uh, but that was a place where I did well after having been a, a chronic truant in junior high school and not a good student at all, uh, destined for trouble. Uh, but this school presented it, uh, a curriculum uh, that um, I was able to accelerate in, and that was being uh, a major in acting, you know. 
So as an acting major, I did very, very well and started getting A's. And I'd never, ever done that in school before. And my mother, I took an A to home for the first time to mom and said, look, mom, I, got, I got an A in it. She said, I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> this, you know, this. So I, I, I said, OK, well, I, I guess maybe I'll try this acting thing. And that's when it became serious for me. Coming up on The Pulse, hundreds of movies and shows that's quite a career. Did you ever before this sit back and go, wow, I, I've done a lot. I, you know, I'm having, like, look at me, like, look at all the things I'm doing. Why did you decide that this was something that you wanted to do and kind of share this story? And there's, there's so much history, but why, why tell it? Well, you know, um, my, my, Producing partner and director, Junie Smith, was actually one who convinced me uh, to do this. Uh, and he convinced me by saying, Glenn, you know, it's time to leave a legacy for your, your kids and your grandkids. And so sort of from the horse's mouth, I'm able to leave this story uh, for my family and, and for my fans, of course, and, 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 you know, those who have any interest. But mainly it was a dedication to my mother and to my my children. Did you ever before this have the time, because I'd imagine that that doing The Legend of Glenn Turman kind of made you sit back and you talk about it and you reflect on it. Uh, did you ever before this sit back and go, wow, like I, I've done a lot. I, you know, I'm having, like, look at me, like, look at all the things I'm doing. Well, I, I, I I still threatened to finish the book that I started some years ago. And uh, I, I don't know if that book will ever get finished, you know. I guess I'm doing everything I can to work around finishing this book. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm not finishing this book. I'm doing everything else but the book. But uh, the documentary has come uh, ahead of the book, and maybe the book will come at some time. I mean, I'm sure your friends and family and people like that have had the opportunity to see it. Um, what's their response been? Uh, uh, taking the granddaughter, uh, who saw it, uh, she wasn't able to attend a screening, but she was just saw the release yesterday and, and wrote me some wonderful, wonderful things and, and really moved me because it let me know that uh, the documentary and what I had to say reached my target audience, which were my family, you know, and my kids. She says, this is a powerful testament to the relationships and the inter interconnectedness of genuinely formed friendships and fellow, st fellow schoolmates, family and friends. I really enjoyed it, Papa, and hope to live my life with as much humility, gratitude, and shine as you continue to do today. Wow. That's... Uh, from from my daughter, my granddaughter. I, I can't tell you how much I, I I am moved by these statements, you know. It's for your family and it's for legacy. And how hard is it for a humble person to realize that your history and, and the legacy you're leaving for your family is also actually history for the rest of us? It's, it's hard to really, you know, take it seriously because you say, well, who, who am I? How did, you know, I'm just Lena's boy, you know. <laughs> How did I end up in this this position, in this world, in this time that anybody would be interested or that I would have any contribution? And, and it's due more to the people that I've met and the circumstances I've found myself in. It really has nothing to do, I want to say, it has nothing to do with me per se. It's the, it's the people who I met, you know, along the way, including yourself, you know, to be to be interviewed by you on such a show, you know, your Pulse show, you've done a wonderful job here. And for me to be a part of your legacy, you know, is a, is a, is a humbling uh, experience for me, you know. For Maverick Entertainment to pick up my documentary and, and spread it to Peacock, you know, and, 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 and uh, to be uh, for Fox, your net, this network, you know, is, is, uh, is a humbling experience. Next, his career began in a time where roles for people of color, they were really tough to come by. Sometimes you have to take the degrading role. And how do you survive that? 
How much have you seen the industry evolve and develop over the years? It's changed in its attempt at inclusion. You see us as people of color and people of all walks of life in ads now in commercials when the book says uh, you know it's good business to include everybody well then you have a revolution going on that has is sustainable you see and you have been in so many different types of roles did you see that struggle behind the scenes to kick those doors open i did it <laughs> what are you talking about come on man did I see it? No, I was a part of all that with the with wonderful soldiers of the times, you know, Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, who we just lost, who will never see another like, you know, Jim Brown, who we just lost, who will never see another like, you know, uh, a, a, a bevy of, of, you know, Maya Angelou, you know, uh, you know, Bea Richards. We were all on the front lines together, you know, and there were not many of us left from that original brigade. You're talking about the, the fight that you were involved in and kicking down doors. But for people on the outside, we see a lot of the successes. Like we see yeah. all of the things that you've yeah. achieved. We don't see that fight. Yeah, you don't take it for granted that there were no sh black showrunners. You, you know, you take, it for, you take it for granted that there were black showrunners, but there were none, you know. You take it for granted that they were great, uh, that, that the, the authors of stories were uh, black, you know, but uh, you don't know that there were white whites and others writing our stories and putting those words in our mouths from their point of view, you know, and that the fight was, you know, as simple, simple things as, okay, so we all are from the ghetto, right? Okay, so that means we're all poor right so that means we were all dirty you know and that the apartments that we lived in you know had holes in the drapes and so on and so forth and that you don't know that the fights were as actors and you know uh, that we were hey no yeah i was poor yeah i was from a girl but my mother she ironed those drapes she ironed those curtains she ironed we washed those floors we washed those so do not put us in a in a hovel of filth associated with what you think our life was about, you know? Uh, so those were simple uh, uh, things that you take for granted now, but no, we had to fight to get that recognition and have our story told with some sort of dignity and some sort of, of, of humanity. Is that another reason why the legend of Glenn Turman, your story, the documentary, sharing that information, again, important to society not just the legacy of your family, because people don't know and need to hear those stories. What I try to do is let young, young people who especially even coming up in the business or thinking of going into the business realize that they have a responsibility, uh, that there is a path and that there isn't a responsibility that comes with your, your search for fame, your search for uh, success, your search to tell be the representatives or the griots who continue to tell our stories. So, you know, you may not be able to pay your rent, you know, and you're gonna have to make a choice whether you pay your rent or you take this degrading role, you know? And uh, sometimes you have to take the degrading role. And how do you survive that, you know? Or do you not take the degrading role? And what does that consequence mean, you know? So uh, has have been on both sides of those issues you know, and have had to dealt, deal with those choices. Uh, and I hope that this uh, lets you know, this, this, my, my story lets you know that uh, there's always a choice, you know, that you have, there's always a choice. As a child, when you got into this, you didn't really get it. And then as you kind of go through the career, you built that legacy, you kicked down some of those doors, you, you helped change the industry. Um, but through that career, you've continued to work with the next and ongoing generations of people breaking into this industry. Do they yes. get it? Or is there just so much money thrown around now that they're just living on the shoulders of greatness? The generation who thought that they were, had a clear path, you know, uh, that they could walk the street without being stopped while walking while being black, <laughs> you know, or that that has uh, awoken or awakened 
uh, the realities uh, in this new generation, that now they're moving forward with purpose and with a more uh, edge and more awareness that it is an ongoing struggle and that until everybody has the right to human dignity, that nobody has any dignity. Coming up on The Pulse, he's worked with greats and made history, and he doesn't think it was an accident. I am of sound mind that it is in my DNA, it is in your DNA, that this was passed on in the blood of our people. How do we get to see, just came out, how do we get to see The Legend of Glenn Turman? Well, The Legend of Glenn Turman is streaming right now on Peacock and uh, uh, Tubi, right? And uh, it's being uh, released by um, Maverick Entertainment. So you just go go to the streaming uh, streaming sources and you'll be able to pull it up. I'm proud to say. We end the pulse every show the same way, and that is with the concept of use your voice for good. No matter who we talk to, we want to know what use your voice for good means to them. So what does it mean to you? The great powers give you breath. <laughs> and you think that breath to speak is something new and fresh. But that breath, that air, those vibes, those thoughts have been reverberating around this universe forever. No more prevalent than in the journey and the story of the African-American and the African diaspora. A, a journalist, you know, I'm an actor. We are griots and griots. Griots and griots are not something that just started here as actor and actor in America. We were brought over on ships as griots and griots, kings and queens, laborers and farmers, smelting iron, iron workers, horsemen. But we were all piling the ships, all, all of us, with all of this pedigree and all of this in our DNA. So there's no accident that you are as great as you are on your show, or that I am able to tell stories and weave stories the way that I do. I am of sound mind that it is in my DNA, it is in your DNA that this was passed on in the blood of our people so that we are doing and using that breath that has been passed on to us. Wow, I, we're gonna leave it there. I, I thank you for the time you spent with us. I thank you for that journey from a young person getting knowledge to a person who continues to pass it on and, and kicking down doors and sharing stories and struggling so that people who come after you can struggle less. I thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for watching what turned out to be, I think, a powerful episode of The Pulse. We were talking to somebody whose career has largely been a part of history and seeing the development from the very early stages, making history and not even realizing it, to the current stage where he's sharing that history and kicking down doors for other people. So I appreciate Mr. Glenn Turman for spending some time with us, and I appreciate you for watching today. You can always hit me up on social media. I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you think of the show. If you're interested in hearing the entire podcast, you can go all places where podcasts are available. I leave you today as I always do, reminding you that whenever you can, use your voice for good, like Mr. Glenn Turman has for his whole career, and have a good one. Mm -hmm.